The affordable Kia EV3's tech is a much bigger deal than you think. Hey EV lovers, welcome to EVpedia, your ultimate hub for electric vehicles. If you're as excited about EVs as we are, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and drop a comment below. And if you want to help us bring even more amazing content, consider giving us a super thanks. Kia's affordable, compact EV actually gets some serious tech upgrades beyond even the more expensive models. Here's what we know. Usually, when you take a more expensive car or platform and add a smaller and more affordable version, it means losing things. Cutting back on features and technology, or, in the case of electric vehicles, battery size and range. That really doesn't seem to be the case with the upcoming Kia EV3. If anything, it's the opposite. The compact and more budget-friendly EV seems to represent a significant evolution for the Hyundai Motor Group's electric platform. Kia just held an event in Korea called the EV3 Tech Day, and the news unveiled their proofs that this car won't be just some decontented penalty box full of compromises to get the price down. Far from it. Some of this we knew about when the car was unveiled a few months ago. Other features are coming into focus now, and they surpass what we've seen from the EV6, EV9, Hyundai Ioniq 5, and others. Much of this information was rounded up by Korea's chosen daily. YouTuber the Ionic guy, you can guess what he's into, and the Korean car blog. It's unclear which, if any, features and upgrades will make it to U.S. market cars, as well as to other Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis EVs. But considering it uses the same eGMP platform as those other cars and more improved models are coming, I'd say many of these changes are a safe bet to see elsewhere. Let's dig in. Some big iPedal changes. If you've ever driven a modern EV from the Korean brands, then you know that you can adjust the level of regenerative braking you experience from nothing to full one-pedal driving, called iPedal, to several levels in between. You do this with a set of paddles on the steering wheel. I'm a fan because it's so customizable, even under different driving conditions. The EV3 adds iPedal 3.01 pedal driving in all regenerative braking stages, not just the strongest one like previous cars. Interestingly, it also works in reverse now. This has never happened to me, but apparently the difference in pedal feel and acceleration threw some people off when they needed to parallel park or something. Makes sense. More advanced regenerative braking is now baked into the semi-autonomous driving assistance systems as well via the navigation system. Previously, the cars might adjust that based on speed camera information alone, but now it's a more cohesive approach to maximize efficiency. And yes, the EV3 now has a memory function to better store your settings when you restart the vehicle. That's great news. A bigger, more serious battery. My EV6 has a 77.4 kilowatt hours. In all-wheel drive form like my car, it's good for 282 EPA rated miles of range. Not bad for a dual motor car, I think. But I may have some battery envy now. The EV3 maxes out with a next generation 81.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, same as the mid-size crossovers like the updated Ionic 5. Again, for a smaller EV, you'd usually expect some downsized battery pack, and indeed, the EV3 will offer a base 58.3 kilowatt hours one too. But not so here. It's also quite improved, per the chosen daily. Kia equipped the EV3 with an 81.4 kilowatt hour Gen 4 battery, the largest in its class, 400 volts. This battery enhances energy density at the cell level, resulting in the EV3 having approximately 22% higher energy density than the Nero EV. Kia explained that the electronics inside the battery pack are mounted in two tiers, adding 25% more battery cells than the Nero EV. As that story notes, and as we knew, the EV3 does make some sacrifices in the form of a 400-volt EV architecture, not an 800-volt one like its bigger brothers. That will mean the EV3 sacrifices some fast charging speeds common to other Hyundai and Kia models. The EV3 is limited to 128 kilowatts of charging power, enough for a 10 to 80% charging time of 31 minutes. However, it still offers vehicle to load, V2L functionality, so it can charge other devices or even your home with an adapter plug. A thin HVAC system. Now, I know this isn't the sexiest thing you're going to read on Inside EVs today, but this is an important first for Kia. A heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC system that's 33% smaller than previous models, which reduces complexity and manufacturing costs while boosting efficiency. That's been going around lately. It has 44% fewer components overall, too. By downsizing this system, Kia frees up more energy for propulsion and range, and less for heating and cooling. Kia's EVs already come with a heat pump, so this seems like a further evolution of something the company was already good at. 
Oh, and it lets the EV3 activate the high voltage main battery for a kind of accessory mode, like you'd have on a gas car, powering heating and cooling and inside V2L functions without having to go into full drive ready mode. In short, the EV3 sounds remarkably impressive for an affordable car. Prices aren't out yet for the US market, but we're predicting a starting price around $33,000 to $36,000 before any tax credits. If that holds true, you should be getting a lot for your money. That's it for today's episode of EVpedia. If you had fun, subscribe, like, and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to give us a super thanks to support our channel. Thanks for watching and stay charged. Until next time, keep it electric.